Apple's marketing strategy is remarkable to me. This iPhone is not just a product, it's a distribution channel for their apps, for their media. It's also a part of their payment infrastructure, which is becoming a part of our day to day life. We transact on this device. So is this Apple Watch. It's also a health monitoring device. In this video, we explore Apple's marketing strategies and its very intelligent, multi layered product approach combined with great skill in copywriting, which comes from a deep understanding of their ideal customers and the problems those customers face. And that's something I discussed with David Meeman Scott in this snippet of a conversation we recently had. If you'd like to learn how to do this as a small business owner and implement these ideas into your own business, be sure to stick around till the end where I'll share some ideas around how I've been implementing this in my business and how you might want to consider doing the same. When Apple came out with the M series chips, I thought it was just a case of vertical integration where they decided to take over the manufacturing of the chips from Intel to minimize disruptions and to maximize control over the entire manufacturing process. But later I discovered that these M series chips have neural networks on them, which has become a core part of their artificial intelligence proposition, which is AI on device with a privacy first approach, which to my knowledge, no other company can currently offer. When Apple came out with the iPod, they deeply understood their customers and that led to the idea of a thousand songs in your pocket, which was a transformative piece of copy. Now I might have credited Steve Jobs with coming up with this copy and I don't know that for a fact, so I apologize if that's incorrect, but that's what I discuss among other things with David Meerman Scott in this conversation. Now this conversation is a snippet from the entire discussion, which you can access at productiveinsights.com slash membership. Let's do this. I'm very impressed with the way Apple has played the AI game in the most recent announcement. And here's my take on it. I'd love to get your thoughts on it. So Apple has done this a few times. When this first came out, I thought it was a product. But then it turns out that this is not just a product. It's a distribution channel for their apps, for their media, which they're doubling down on, yeah. and so on and so forth. It's also a payment processor. Who knows what else they're going to turn it into, but their product releases are multi-layered, which is very interesting to me. Now, they kind of hijacked or newsjacked the, the term AI by calling it Apple intelligence, which I thought was a bit cheeky, but it seems to be catching on now. But what was more interesting to me is there was all this speculation before iOS 18 was announced. Is Apple going to partner with Gemini? Is Apple going to partner with OpenAI and so on? And now it turns yeah. out that they've created this thing called private cloud. They've been flying the privacy flag forever. They've also been creating what they call efficient language models or small language models, which are going to work on the device, on device, on the chip, faster response times and so on. And then if they have to send questions to what they call the private cloud, they have turned ChatGPT, potentially Gemini and Meta all into utilities that are plugging into this thing. And so they've kind of turned the tables in a sense, and they've turned these, uh, the, these frontline players into providers by creating this ecosystem and they're folding them into their ecosystem. I thought that was a very cheeky but in interesting strategy of just taking over the space from, as usual, from not being the first mover. What are your thoughts on that? Well, yes, um, they, they are rarely the first mover, but when they do come out with something, um, it tends to be yes. um, very proprietary. Re remember back to, I want to say probably around 2004-ish, I don't know, so 20 years ago, I don't know the exact timing, but there are a whole bunch of technology yes. companies coming out with MP3 players, and they were really, really, really hard to use. And I had, I had yes. one and man, it was hard to use. And then all of a sudden the iPod comes out together with iTunes. It was an ecosystem and, you know, its successor now, Apple Music together with my iPhone right. is how I listen to music. You know, it's proprietary. I think that the way that Apple is approaching AI and by the way, Siri is AI and I think Siri is Siri, it seems like, is going to be their, their primary interface to their AI. So in other words, it's voice command. Um, and that's super interesting in itself because the other services, at least initially, 
were primarily text interfaces. I, I find it fascinating that Apple comes out comes out of the gate with something that's that at least on the surface appears to be primarily voice activated. But yeah, I think always when when it comes to Apple, we want to look at what are they doing because they they just love this idea of being proprietary and it's it's their ecosystem and they control it. And I suspect that's what what's going to continue to happen. And I think this idea of experience that you mentioned is absolutely spot on correct. Um, and one of the things that I constantly do in my blog posts that I constantly do in my books is yes. examples of success. It's one thing to say, here's how you should do this kind of marketing. It's another thing to say, here's an example of someone who did it that's been successful. And that's hard to recreate. And that's, I believe, as you said correctly in my mind, um, how you can break through when everyone's just using this recycled drug. One thing I think that Steve Jobs did, which put Apple on the map, was his copywriting. Because you remember when he came out with the iPod, he came out with a line that really yeah. landed for me, and that was a thousand songs in your pocket. You remember when they were advertising all the MP3 players, they were talking yes. about megabits of space. Who? Yes. What does that mean? I'm a music lover. I don't yes. care about megabits of space. How no, many yeah. songs? Right. And that thing said a thousand That's songs, right. and it personalized it by saying, in my pocket. And I thought that was amazing. The other yes. very interesting copy piece of copy he came up with because at the time people would listen to discmans and that they would bounce when you would walk or they would trip i should say and yeah. the other one he came up with which sounded a bit lame but it worked it was no more moving parts i don't know if you remember that i don't remember that one a thousand songs in your pocket yeah i absolutely remember that one and it's also it's super simple and if you look at um their stores if you look at their website the design is super clean the design of the products is super clean the interfaces are clean uh, you know, they have focused very much on a particular aesthetic. Yeah. For and, you know, the Vision Pro has just come out today in Australia. Uh, I know it's been released in the US a long time ago. I'm very interested to see that they've coined another phrase using your analogy earlier on. They're calling it spatial computing. So the thing is that the execution is pretty good. I mean, I don't think the Vision Pro is accessible to most people. It's obnoxiously expensive here in Australia. It's $6,000, three and a half grand yeah. in the US. Oh, wow. Yeah. It is quite remarkable, yeah. the experience that it delivers. And I think the next version is probably going to be that much more commercial. I agree with that. I didn't buy one. I was pretty critical of it when it first came out. But um, hey, the next version or, or two or three versions from now, I, I, I think we, wa we need to be watching what they're doing. How can our listeners learn more about you, David? And uh, when does your book come out so they can get themselves a copy? Uh, the New Rules of Marketing and PR, the ninth edition of the book, completely revised, updated new stories, big chapter on artificial intelligence, comes out in mid-August 2024, uh, available practically anywhere. So uh, do take a look at that. Um, my full name is David Meerman, M-E-E-R-M-A-N Scott. So and you will find me because I am the only David Wow. Mirman Scott and the entire planet. Thank you so much for being on the podcast, David, and maybe we'll talk again soon. That'd be fun, Ash. Thanks a lot. Talk soon. Okay. Earlier in this video, I said that I would share how I'm implementing this multi-layered strategy that Apple uses in our business and how you might want to consider doing the same thing. Here on our website, and I'll show you how to download this in a minute, you can get access to our nine-step repeatable business growth framework. And this is a tool you could actually download, no opt-in required. You can print it out and they can have it sitting there next to their computer. And on the face of it, it's a useful tool. However, it is also a multi-layered offering because if you look closely at this document, in the middle here, it says, click here to download your free nine-step business growth email course. Now, just imagine if you are somebody who's interested in downloading the course, as opposed to just being able to look at this document, then you might want to click on this, right? And that takes you to our productiveinsights.com forward slash subscribe page, where you can enter in your email address. And as long as you click these two buttons and you click on the subscribe button, it sends the course off to you. So the big idea here is if I decided to share this with a friend and they didn't want to give me their email address, they still get the PDF, which is useful. However, they might share it with 10 other friends and the 10th friend 
might say, you know what, I do want to check out the course. So they click on this thing and like I just showed you, they decide to get the course for which they do need to give us their email address. But they may have got this PDF without having provided an email address and it may have jumped 10 hosts as it were. This tool has virality built into it, but this thing can scale infinitely. The other interesting thing about this tool is, see these things here where it says, click me? Each of these nine steps is clickable. And if you were to click on say the second step where it says research your market, create an empathy map for your ideal customer persona, you might click on that and it takes you to my conversation with my friend Seth Godin, which then you can read through the whole show notes. You can watch my conversation. So let's get straight into it. So in your book, Seth, This Is Marketing, you said something that really... That's me chatting to Seth on our YouTube video. So it's sending traffic to our YouTube video. If we want, we could have a pop-up on this page. That way we can choose to make other offers to people as pop-ups or maybe someone lands on the page and they get the opportunity to opt in. So this nine-step framework has virality built into it because you could share it with a hundred people and only five or ten of those hundred people decide that they want to give us their email address in exchange for which they get the course but if they decide they just want the pdf they get it without giving us an email address and the other thing is that it allows you to click on any of these things and that links back to a particular podcast episode where you can go deeper into that particular topic so hopefully you find this useful and you might be able to do something similar in your business let me know in the comments what you think of this i also teach how to do this in the membership program which you can check out at productiveinsights.com forward slash membership if you did like this video i highly recommend checking out this video which talks about the five mistakes i've made in business and the solutions to those mistakes so hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and you don't have to make them yourself thanks for listening and watching ciao for now and i'll see you in the next video